is your fish stuck at the same size? There's a subscriber who asked me what would cause stunting in tilapia grown in fish tanks. So this person said that their fish was five months old and there was no change in growth. So we are concluding that the fish is stunted. Actually, that's what they said, that the fish was stunted. So in this video, we're going to be looking at factors that would cause stunting in your fish tank for tilapia. We'll also be looking at tips to avoid the problem. Hi everyone, if you're new to this channel, my name is Nefuno Kabwe. I like to do videos to do with fish farming, natural hair care, gardening, and anything in between. So in this video, we're going to be talking fish farming. So there are several factors that can contribute to stunting of fish. These factors are not only unique to tilapia fish that is farmed in, in tanks, even in the tilapia that is grown in open ponds like outdoor the conditions that must be met are similar unless maybe we look at the ethan ponds maybe there it's a little bit different but uh, the factors that would generally cause stunting are basically the same one of them is poor feeding and nutrition if you don't feed your fish adequately and then maybe you feed it poor quality of feed your fish will not grow very well and it's going to stunt. That's why we encourage you to get trained and know how to feed and all. As long as you have the information and you know the basics of feeding, then you would know that there has to be a feed ration, there has to be the time that you are going to feed. And you also know that the nutrition of the feed matters also. There has to be a certain amount of protein, a certain amount of um, fat in your feed. So now you don't really have to know all those details as a fish farmer. The manufacturers of the feed or the people that are selling the feed, most of the times they'll be able to give you that information. So you can ask them how you can feed your fish. You ask them for the feed ration. There's usually a feed ration stuck on the wall for every kind of fish feed that you buy. For example, if it's other aqua farm feed, well, farm feed is no longer on the market. Uh, maybe numb feeds or something. So how do you determine what feed to feed at what stage and how many times you feed in a day? It's very simple. You need to be doing sampling in your pond. So I'll just give you an example of what we do in an open pond. I'm sure in a tank it's easier because it's not very wide. So in a pond we do our sample weighing like this. We get the fish of course we sanitize and all. If you want to know the details about the safe way to get your fish for sample weighing I'll link the video at the end of the video so that you can watch how to sample weigh and that will enable you to calculate the feed uh, ration and you will be able to know a quantity of feed, the numbers of times you need to feed, and what stage of feed you need to use. For as long as you just know that the nutritional content of your feed is okay, then now it becomes up to you as a farmer to pick the best feed on the market. You will need to look at availability, of course the nutritional content, and the price. Now, a number of you have asked me what type of feed I use, and the answer is I've used several, but the one I've used the most is ala aqua. So, do your own research and find the best feed for you. So make sure that you always ask for your feed ration when you go to buy your fingerlings so that you feed your fish correctly. You need to check that your feeding was adequate and you were feeding good quality feed to your fingerlings. So for those interested in knowing more about fish farming, you can contact the experts. Iban Aquafish will be conducting training 5th of September 2025 and the charges are 150 kwacha. So contact them on the numbers on the screen. I'll also link the numbers in the description down below. Then the second one is poor management of your fish tank. Fish requires clean water, especially if you've overstocked. 
If you've overstocked, it means there'll be overproduction of waste. And if you overfeed, you're also contaminating your pond. So it means that there'll be a lot of impurities in your water. There'll be a lot of fertilization, which can become poisonous to the fish. Eventually increase the stress of the fish and stuntedness. I'll just stress this. Make sure that you have uh, sufficient water and proper waste removal you know there's gunk that collects at the bottom so since it's in a tank there has to be a proper way or system in which you are draining that waste because it's going to cause ammonia build up in your tank because the normal ponds have got an outlet that allows the drain to take along the fish poop and also reduces the fertilization because in your tank you might end up finding that your water is becoming dark green meaning your pond is over fertilized and then when there's such a situation you'll find that your fish will be gasping for air in the night because those living organisms in the water the plankton the phytoplankton and and all will also be competing for oxygen in the night with the fish so you don't want that competition because that competition will cause your fish to start gasping for air and then that will lead to stress when the fish is stressed there will be disease less appetite there will not be growth and then they'll be stunting that's where i see the complication in the tank maybe the proper waste removal but if you can make sure that you the waste is properly removed from the bottom you hoover it i am meant to understand that they are pond hoovers maybe you could use pond hoovers to remove the debris down or you can do your proper drain system in order for you to remove the waste the third reason why your fish could be stunting in your tank is because of low dissolved oxygen and this is usually very common in tank dan fish because there's a tendency to overstock so you find that when you overstock your fish there's competition for feeding for space and all and makes the management of your water quality very very difficult because the demand for water is also so high and the need to also clean the debris and whatnot is also very high this results into lowered dissolved oxygen and this consequently leads to stress in your fish and disease as well as stunting make sure that your water is properly aerated you have sufficient dissolved uh, oxygen just like in a big pond your water must be very adequate just make sure you don't overstock your tank unless your tank is so advanced that you have proper flows of water and aeration then you can use the standard which is uh, usually between 50 to 70 fish a square meter which is a lot and better as compared to the lower stocking densities in our old ordinary ponds but if you can manage your aeration you can manage to clean your water frequently maybe you can afford to kind of uh, overstock but not to overcrowd so you need to be able to manage that so the temperatures also matter. For example, we're in the cold season. This is not the right time to stock. Even if you are so energized, you want to stock right now, I would say hold your fire. Maybe just make sure that you do your excavation now, your preparations and everything so that after the cold season, now you can stock because there is a required temperature for the fish and your temperature should be between 27 to 30 degrees Celsius. Anything below that makes the fish not be active it won't have appetite to eat and because of that it will be not growing and it will stunt number five the other reason that could cause your tilapia fish to be stunted in your tank is poor management of ph of your water normally the fish would survive and grow in a ph that is within the range of 6.5 to 8.5 and you also need to avoid higher fluctuations because these would likely cause stress damage to the eyes the skin and the gills so to cure that problem you need to make sure that your ph is monitored and is within the recommended range 
The other factor that can make your fish to stunt is poor quality of the fingerlings. You need to make sure that your fingerlings are of good quality. Buy from well-known hatcheries. Make sure that you get the sex reversed fingerlings because if you don't, you find that you have uh, reproduction and then your pond is going to have different sizes of fish. When there's reproduction, it means you have a lot of females. And the females don't grow big, so the preferred gender is male because the males are the ones that even grow bigger pond. But at least when you get a sex reversed fish, that is a bit reduced, but we still need to work on that as a country. But if you go and get fish that is not sex reversed, immediately you stock it. In just a few months, the fish will start reproducing and then you won't know what type of feed to feed, whether you're feeding the beginner fry or you're feeding for juveniles or you're feeding for grower or you're feeding for finisher. So that is why you need to make sure that when you get the fingerlings, you get the good quality and reversed ones. Number seven, disease and stress. You also need to make sure that when you're buying your fingerlings, you check them nicely, you check their eyes, check the mouth and the top of the head. Sometimes you find that the fish is sick and the fish that is sick, it's not very active. It looks whitish, like a fungal fungal thing. So if you find that you're getting fish that has that, it's better you give it a salt bath before you stock it. Or if you've stocked, you can throw in some bags of coarse salt. Then you'll see that the fish will be hanging around the salt. It's, it's almost as if they know that they need to get treated. They'll be hanging around the bags of salt so that they get treated and that should be okay. Additionally, you need to make sure that your fingerlings acclimatize before you stock them. So after you've checked that your fingerlings are healthy and they were well oxygenated when you were transporting them, they've arrived well, when you put them in the water, you need to make them rest for some time and allow them for about 20 to 30 minutes allow them to acclimatize to the new environment so that there is no too much disparities in temperature and all so you wait for them just exercise patience and then start opening the bags gently and then allowing them to come out on their own not to force them out you just allow them to gently come out until they are completely out your patience is going to pay because you will find that your fingerlings are healthy, they are not stressed, and even when you start feeding at the right time, you'll find that they will have appetite and they'll be able to eat and therefore they will grow. So those are some of the factors that can cause your fish to stunt in your tank, which is completely not unique to the tank, but it's I can imagine that it's worse in the tank because it's a confined space and it's if the aeration is not done properly and I don't think we have uh, proper aeration currently in Zambia but if you happen to know people that have done the indoor farming in tanks and the aeration is, is, is perfect let me know in the comments down below I would like to try some container farming as well and see how it goes you need to manage your pH, which should be between 6.5 and 8.5. And then you also need to make sure that the fish is able to get some sunlight. Because if you notice, when you're feeding your fish, when it's hot, that's when you see your fish coming up to come and they feed and it's excited, it's eating. But when it's cloudy and cold, the fish normally does not come up. It's usually at the bottom. So that will cause them not to eat. And if it's not eating, definitely it's not going to get the benefits of nutrition and then it's going to stunt so your fish will not grow. I hope this short video answers your question on what could be the cause of stunting in your pond. It's not very unique to tank grown fish, but I think it's a little bit more sensitive in the tank grown fish. If you found this video helpful and you've enjoyed watching this video, please make sure you like the video, invite more people and make sure you subscribe. Turn on your notification button so that each time I produce a video you don't miss a thing i would like to thank all of you for sticking with me please make sure you like share and subscribe it helps me a lot thank you very much for watching and bye see you in the next video bye